the weather forecast with Coloca and its multi-purpose banquet hall, Il Palazzo. Bonsoir, ladies and gentlemen, and good to have you again on this edition of the weather forecast. We expect to have a calm weather across the nation tonight with the lowest temperatures expected in the northern and western regions. We'll have as low as 10 degrees in the Adamawa region, 12 in the north and the center, East and littoral regions expected to have temperatures as low as 14 degrees. In the south region, we'll have as low as 18 degrees. And the northwest region is expected to have temperatures as low as 11 degrees. Next, we go over to the southwest where tonight there is no chance of precipitation and same thing by morning with the least temperature at Menji. Next, we go over to the far north region where tonight we expect no precipitation in the region and same thing by morning with Mokolo having the lowest temperature. And lastly, until the west region tonight, there is no chance of rainfall in the entire region. And same thing by morning with Baham and Banjun having the least temperature of 14 degrees. I encourage you to make time and go behold the beautiful Mwanka waterfall in Bafang. Thank you for watching and do have a good night. In tonight's newscast, we take the pulse of day one of the campaigns. The 182 cadet officers who triumphed yesterday from the Combined Services Military Academy, EMEA, are armed to defend Cameroon's unity and territorial integrity. In tonight's newscast, we come back to highlights of the President's speech during the graduation ceremony. The intermediate, the intermediate Lions beat their Chadian counterparts two goals to zero in an friendly ahead of the African Nations Championship Chan 2020. Key moments of the encounter right ahead. Good evening, thanks for joining us on the 7.30 newscast. I'm Gladys Tata. President Paul Bia yesterday urged newly graduated officers from the Combined Services Military Academy to be disciplined and remain loyal to state institutions. The Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces equally stated the support of the nation and his personal esteem to the Defence Forces. Ebenezer Kanga listened to the Head of State and has the highlights of his address. The Head of State began by addressing the security situation of the country, which he said has come under serious threats these past years with the Boko Haram insurgency in the far north, armed group attacks in the east, and separatist atrocities in the northwest and southwest regions. But the defense forces, he said, have made it possible to improve the situation. The head of state expressed optimism that the measures taken after the major national dialogue will bring normalcy to the restive English-speaking regions. To the graduating cadet officers, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces told them that their mission is to defend the country from external and internal threats. To accomplish this mission, they should be inspired by the late Major General Koji Jacob, who died on the war front against Boko Haram, and after whom the badge has been christened. With the sound training they have received, the president told them to adapt to the security context of the country, marked by asymmetric warfare and cyber criminality. The president cautioned the young officers to respect human rights as they discharge their duties, to work with local authorities and the population as they protect the citizens and their properties, and to work in the footsteps of their elders who have kept the motto, honor and loyalty. The head of state stated the support of the nation and his personal esteem to the defense forces of the country. Campaigns for the nine dual February elections have uh, kicked off uh, nationwide, as you heard in the elections, but we shall be coming back uh, to that uh, newscast. And uh, as you just saw there, President Paul Bia, who was uh, officiating the, the graduation ceremony yesterday at the military headquarters, and this milestone is an emotional roll roller. Larry Efande now uh, in, was at that headquarters and says that they were all smiles and bro uh, on the faces of these graduating students. Merci pour tout l'honneur que tu as fait à ton père. 
The feeling is quite strange for her. Every teardrop is not in fear but in shared joy. She wish her husband were alive to see today when their daughter graduates as fifth best. Haven't worked so hard for what feels like so long until today actually arrives and suddenly it all went by so fast. For their parents, it is a pretty big deal. You know, I feel very, very fine. I'm very, very happy. As she has succeeded. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. As all it says. I am stronger now. It was really tough, but I am stronger today. So I'm just I'm just happy. I, I, I want to cry, but it's not possible now. I am very happy because this is a real opportunity to prove that I am a patriot. Hugs here are tighter. The smiles get brother and the shouts are so loud. It is as if all of the fluctuating emotions ever experienced get bottled up into one huge melting pot of feelings and it all just burst out on this graduation day. And celebrations continued in homes after the graduation parade at the military headquarters brigade. Families and friends poured champagne to bless the epaulet of the new officers and toasted to their success as they begin a new chapter in their career. Rainatu Sali tells us more. A triumphant entry followed by the blessing of Epaulet to salute three years of rigorous training and sacrifice that have seen Karine Angela Umba join the rank of officers of the Cameroon Defense Forces. I feel um, so happy because this was not easy, uh, especially as a woman, to go through these three years. Family and friends can now toast to the success of the new officer whose months of sleepless nights at the Combined Services Military Academy got washed away by senior colleagues, a way of saying welcome to the corps. At the Banzomo family residence, the night was far from over as family and friends jumped into celebration. The shouts and smiles tell of a family proud of the success of their son, Yves Trezor. I feel very, very proud. Proud to be a father of uh, uh, an officer in our army uh, who is ready for the task. 36 months of a challenging training has ended. It is now time to open the new chapter of training application, which begins now. As you say, Raina Sali, it begins just now. And uh, over 200 benches have been donated to some six schools in Manfe by the National Gendarmerie, represented in the southwest region by the Legion Commander Kenem Bozike Henry. The donation has been described by the recipients in Manfe as a panacea to the problem of overcrowded classrooms in the locality, which is host to several IDPs since the beginning of the crisis. Details with Guy Roger Nana. These school children could not hold back their excitement in gratitude to the soldiers of the National Gendarmerie as they received their brand new classroom desks. The donation of 250 benches will be shared between about six schools in Murphy Town. Before the coming of these benches, most of our schools have been suffering. The case in point is just my one with a enrollment of 537 with very few benches. So these benches that have been donated to us by the National Gendarmerie is going to help us. This act of solidarity by the military is one of many more to follow aimed at reinforcing the ties between the population and the military. The National Gendarmerie realized that uh, there were many students who were uh, taking their lessons uh, without sitting on benches. The National Gendarmerie decided uh, to, to, to realize those uh, 250 benches for secondary uh, education and for primary schools here in Manu. We are with them 
We are here to protect them. Figures from the Divisional Delegation of Secondary Education for Manu state that schools in Manfis Center have a record number of over 3,000 students registered this year and over 2,000 pupils are equally attending schools. Certainly an indication that parents have understood the importance of school and are willing to join the pursuit for a better future. The National Gendarmerie have graduated over 1,000 non-commissioned officers with technical capacity to face the new, the new security challenges in the country. The graduation ceremony was chaired by Brigadier General Daniel Eloko Binjok, who represented the Secretary of State at the Ministry of Defense in charge of the National Gendarmerie. Kilian Dandifon was there and came back with the following report. Five months of intense activity and training. There are 1,001 who today graduate from the National Gendarmerie High Command Schools and Training Centers with technical practical certificate diplomas that qualify them as non-commissioned officers of the Cameroonian military. They can now lead a team or a group in situations of tactics or in crowd control. They can also have officers in their headquarters and brigade commanders in judicial police exigencies. In the graduation ceremony, about 300 represented their mates who are already deployed in the field within the current trouble security context. You have been trained within a special context marked by a new kind of security threat. And unfortunately, you have been equipped with skills to face it unlike your mates already deployed. You have to bring back peace and security during this elections period and thereafter. Brigadier General Daniel Eloko Binjak, Central Coordination Director of the National Gendarmerie Operations, who represented the Secretary of State at the Ministry of Defense, in charge of the National Gendarmerie, also told the laureates that discipline must be a characteristic trait for all of them. As you heard in our lead story, uh, campaigns for the kickoff has started today at all uh, over the national territory for the municipal and legislative elections. 38 political parties will compete in the municipal election, while 32 parties take part in the legislative election. Ebenezer Kanga has facts and figures about the elections. The February 9, 2020 twin elections have hit a record in terms of participation of political parties. 38 parties are competing in the municipal elections, while 32 are going in for the legislative elections. This is indicative of the enthusiasm that political parties have for the elections. It is also indicative that political parties have taken the full measure of the importance of the local elections, coming at a time when decentralization is being rendered effective, the local elections this year are crucial. The enthusiasm of political parties should be followed by that of voters who should turn on massively on voting day and cast their votes. With the new dispensation in local collectivities in Cameroon, the local population has to become masters of their own destiny by voting those who will be able to effectively implement decentralization for their development. According to figures from ELECAM, 6,855,274 eligible voters will vote in 26,000. 271 polling stations across the country. The February 9 twin elections will be elections unlike others because of the stakes involved. The Director General of CRTV says equity will be respected during a special campaign program that will be broadcast daily by the state media. Sean Dongo was speaking today at the production center here in Balatu while in a coordination meeting with representatives of the different political parties. In Kenya, Romeo tells us more. 51 political parties will be taking part in this year's twin municipal and legislative elections in Cameroon. With campaigns that kicked off this Saturday, the state media is charged with the responsibility of informing the public 
with activities of the respective political outfits while chairing a coordination meeting with representatives of aspiring candidates, CRTV's Director General Charles Ndungu made it clear that equity will be respected to the latter in the allocated airtime. We have had the assurance there will be equity for every party. I ask for our time in TV and in radio. The directors told us what we have. And I try to know if it's possible to do our speech in regions. They say it's better to do it in central TV because the environment here is uh, made to be yes, for all parties. The special propaganda program will be broadcast over the national station as from 8.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. and on TV as from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. daily. Away from politics, customs officers in the northwest region say they are not relenting in activities against criminality in the region in spite of the prevailing insecurity. Celebrations uh, marking the uh, Customs World Day, the officers from the regions and the seven sectors said they were up to the task and they will resume fully as the crisis situation normalizes. Mabel Mekemdi Sakam reports from CRTV Northwest in Bamenda. <laughs> Personnel of the customs sector in the Northwest region celebrating World Custom Day at a time when the crisis rocking the Northwest region is having a toll on their activities. The target revenue of the customs sector of the region was planned at over 200 million CFA francs for the financial year 2019, but only 10 percent of the revenue was collected. The seven customs bureaus in the region are said to have been handicapped. Some are closed as a result of the crisis, but according to the chief of the Northwest Customs Sector, Customs Northwest will not relent in its efforts. We do fight against cross-border criminality, trafficking. Last year, uh, we made many seizures, amongst which was the seizure of uh, about 200 kilograms of uh, pangolin scales. Our expectations are very high because uh, the situation is gradually normalizing itself, and we know that we are going to attain those limits which we used to attain in previous years. This occasion to mark the World Customs Day in the Northwest was also an avenue to acknowledge staff and partners who, against all odds, enforce customs activities in the region. It was also also an opportunity for the custom personnel to comfort internally displaced persons in Bamenda. Some five internally displaced families received foodstuffs and a blanket each. Youths in the southwest region have been sensitized to the need to massively participate in the February 9 twin elections. This was during a workshop organized by the Active Youth Association for the Emergence of Cameroon by 2035. The workshop was patronized by Professor Nalova Leonga, as Fame Bonyi Aize tells us from CRTV Southwest in Boya. The workshop tagged Double Ballot, the hope for the youth of the Southwest and Northwest regions, organized by members of the Active Youth Association for the Emergence of Cameroon by 2035, stressed on the need for the youths in the Southwest to be part of the electoral process in the country. It was very important for us to tell this youth that uh, this election that is coming is one of the most important uh, topic of uh, going out of this crisis. That means one of the important solutions to this crisis is this upcoming uh, municipal and legislative elections. So that's why we have decided to organize this uh, political talk in order to invite them not to be afraid to uh, uh, come out massively on the 9th February and uh, together let's go and uh, vote. The Civic Youth Engagement Workshop, which took place at the Boya Council Chambers, created a platform for the interim mayor of Boya, Dr. John Efande, to remind the youths of FACO on the necessity to uphold Republican values. The workshop organized under the patronage of Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education, ended with young leaders expressing their desire to be more involved in the political life of the country. 
The Minister of Trade, Luke Magloan Bargat Tangana, has urged his collaborators to be relentless in ensuring that locally made products are widely sold on local and sub-regional markets. He was speaking during a ceremony to receive New Year wishes from staff of his ministerial department. Clarice Aritakan tells us more. The challenge for staff of the Ministry of Trade in 2020 will be to ensure that the consumption of products made in Cameroon moves from just being a slogan to a reality nationwide. This will entail reinforcing mechanisms and strategies put in place to push this through. Trade officials stressed the need to give pride of place to local products on domestic and sub-regional markets, given the imperative to curb imports. And reaching others at the detriment of the local economy should no longer be the norm it was maintained, while the fight against contraband activities will be intensified. Our objective is, you know, the large-scale marketing of our, our products in the market. The African market is now open, a free trade area. And we have the possibility to market our product in uh, that space. We have to fight, to continue to fight against, uh, you know, illicit uh, trade. With a battle plan thus defined, discipline, hard work and team spirit have been recommended to staff of the Trade Department in order to achieve the objectives of 2020. In a related development, staff and external collaborators with the Ministry of Water and Energy have taken the commitment to redouble efforts to achieve the goals set by the Ministry. The commitment was taken during presentation of New Year wishes to Minister Gaston Elundu Esomba, as Luma Slim Davis reports. The ceremony to present New Year wishes to the Minister of Water and Energy, Gaston Elundu Esomba, by the personnel of his ministry was one of many faces that brought mixed feelings of joy, memories and professional satisfaction to many. It was an opportune moment to award medals to those who deserved them, show gratitude and recognition to others, and also bid farewell to a retired civil servant whom over the years had put in the best. The Secretary General of the Ministry outlined achievements so far, which include efforts to provide clean and sufficient energy and water to the population, amongst others. The Minister of Water and Energy, Gaston Elundu Esomba, expressed satisfaction with the output of the personnel. The Minister said emphasis in 2020 will be put on rehabilitating Sonara, the oil refinery, and called on all to consider the general interest that will guarantee good results. How to build a business from an idea to an action is what some 60 students of the Higher Institute of Management, ISAM, have been enlightened on during a two-day intellectual visit to the African Institute of Computer Sciences, IAI Cameroon. The delegation from Gaundere was, to, was in Yaoundé by the director of the institute, Raoul Gabriel Janko, where they have tapped from the expertise of the resident representative of IAI Cameroon, Armand Claude Abanda, in entrepreneurship. Yoti Kale Lisonge tells us more. These are samples of what students in a school of management can cultivate as agric engineers. In an institute of computer sciences, they find themselves receiving tips on how to build a business, going from an idea to an action. Agricultural expertise combined with the mastery of ICT can grow riches. We have seen what students of ISAM can cultivate, watermelon and cabbage, just to name these few. But students of the African Institute of Computer Sciences can put in place a platform that permits them to market their products locally and internationally, thanks to ICT miracles. Assuming that the words of wisdom and encouragement did not fall on deaf ears, these students are told what values to uphold and the path to follow to be successful. To be patient, to make the entrepreneurship the target of their life, because it's from the entrepreneurship we can gain our personal life and contribute efficiently for the development of the country. The two-day visit is crowned with a football match between students of IAI Cameroon and those of Isam, not to find out who is tougher in the game, but to demonstrate a spirit of fraternity. The best students of the Quran have been selected from the 10 regions of the country to take part in a national competition. They are now in Yaoundé ahead of the contest to choose the country's representatives at the world's Quran competition in Saudi Arabia later this year. Victor Siga has more.
East Young Muslims are the best Quranic students chosen from the 10 regions to compete for the Quranic challenge that takes place in Saudi Arabia. The religion of Quran is very important in the religion because Quran is the word of God, of Allah the Almighty. The Muslim have to memorize the Quran to know exactly his religion. After the regional level, this national competition is the last stage at which only the best represents Cameroon at the international level. First of all, we have to select the candidate in the region. Down the, the winner on the, in the region come here to Yaoundé to do the, comp the national competition in the order to select the winner in Cameroon, who is going to represent the Cameroon in abroad, in Saudi Arabia, in Morocco and Turkey. I would like uh, to ask God Allah, the Almighty, to give him the peace and to help him in the order to be the first in the war. To get selected, the 40 participants will have to convince the national and international members of jury with the ability to recite the holy book. In sports, Cameroon's intermediate Lions have picked up a 2-0 victory over Chad in an international friendly played earlier today. The game at the Yaoundé Omni Sports Stadium was the highlight of a three-week training camp for the Lions, who are intensifying preparations ahead of this year's African Nations Championship in Cameroon. Jeffrey Abane watched today's friendly and now reports. The almost empty stands at the Yaoundé Omnisport Stadium could not come in the way of Yves Clément Aroga and a victory on his first international game in charge of Cameroon's Intermediate Lions. A victory that was hard fought following an avalanche of threats on the Cameroonian goal, like these failed attempts at the 20th, 22nd and 27th minutes, all from Chad's first division top scorer, Kevin Yaya. The Lions' response was almost immediate. Samuel Lend summed up a beautiful collective move with a goal in the 36th minute to put Cameroon in the lead. From the public, and here comes an opportunity. A high pressing in the second half was rewarded in the 55th minute when Rene Ndi made the most of a goalkeeping malhandling to score Cameroon's second. Several other chances for the home side went begging, while the Chadians' disappointment was accentuated in the 88th minute with the injury picked up by Marvin Hassan after a collision with Samuel Lend. The player was rushed out of the pitch in an ambulance. A Tabawak's red card minutes to the end of the game was perhaps the low-key moment in Cameroon's 2-0 victory as the Lions steamed up towards the African Nations Championship this April on home soil. Well, and that's how we saw the 7.30 news. But before we go, a recap of our headlines. Camer campaigns for the February 9 dual elections effectively kicks off nationwide with party officials showcasing campaign strategies to woo their electorate. Meantime, the 182 cadet officers who triumphed yesterday from the combined services military academy EMEA are armed to defend Cameroon's unity and territorial integrity. And in this newscast, we came back to highlights of the president's speech during that graduation ceremony. And the intermediate Lions beat their Chadian counterparts two goals to zero in an international friendly ahead of the African Nations Championship, Shan 2020. Thanks for watching. In another 30 minutes, you will be in the company of Atta Badine Umar for the 830 News. I will be your host tomorrow, same time, for another newscast. Until then, it's bye from all of us on the 730 call. Good night.